We continue on the Joe Beaver Show. Mike Parker with John Warren. We'll have some open phones a little bit later in the hour. No show tomorrow with Seattle Mariners baseball. Mitch Hanniger, former Corvallis Knight. That's right. Uh, That's we'll, what I say every morning when I give his, his line. Former former Knight, Mitch Hanniger. And he has been uh, a guest on the show thanks to our next guest on the show, the CEO of the Corvallis Knights who brought Knights baseball to us in the summer of 2007. We didn't have the summer that we all have become accustomed to and enjoyed and appreciated last summer. A full schedule is out for 2021. We're hopeful that it will play out according to schedule. There's been some news with respect to the league and its expansion down the road in Springfield and other things we want to talk to Dan Siegel about today and maybe even him working to broker An opportunity to visit with Mitch, who's having a huge year for the Mariners again down the road. Dan, great to have you on the show. How are you today? Ah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Mike and John. It's good to hear your guys' voices. Thank you. Now, speaking of voices and good to see you, i got to ask you this. You sent me a link to Harold's house, and there are your sons, and I just seen them, Dan, gave me a shock how old your boys are now because when I I think of you, when I think of Briley Knight, they're just stunning things. Kids who we saw grow up in the ballpark over the summers with Knights baseball. Our, our, uh, Riley's a grown man, essentially, now. Your boys yep. are, what, 18 and 15? Caden and Kellen, yep. they're teammates with the Grant Generals right now playing baseball, and they were on Harold Reynolds, Harold's house. Tell us about that, how that came about. Oh, man, that was crazy. Yeah, they grow up, don't they? Yes. And, uh, you know, one of the advantages of being around the ballpark is they just – think you know you know uh you you learn the game you know by yeah obviously everyone's followed briley's career at Crimson valley and then you know uh with the knights he was mvp of the league in 2019 and now starring with the pirates but yeah as far as the harold reynolds uh piece on mlb network just i think my boys kind of caught lightning in a bottle they uh you know they're football players and they're the only football players on the baseball team and with the COVID schedule they uh they had played a bowl game at mountainside on a friday night uh in fact my oldest caden was the the mvp of that game he had a a great ending to his football career and he's a defensive lineman you know and has a great game and monday he's the starting pitcher for grant uh, <laughs> wow uh, against uh, of all teams west lynn and you guys know west lynn's a a powerhouse, and uh, they threw a kid uh, that's going to University of Portland, a senior, really good pitcher. So I remember Caden saying, Dad, I, I mean, I've seen no live pitching, you know. <laughs> I, I, he's freaking out, and I said, Son, you know, get up there and, you know, get a good swing in, right? So kind of the, the story goes, uh, you know, Westland jumps up, they're up 4 2. I think it's the fourth or fifth inning, and Caden drives the ball out the ballpark in right center and all of a sudden there's some excitement at four three and then his little brother who's a sophomore um you know first varsity game uh it was called on to pinch hit in the fifth inning and he hit a one old fastball a mile and all of a sudden we're tied up four four it was crazy and the place you know there was like there had to be 300 people at the game i think people are anxious to get out and yeah and anyway, so they ended up winning 6-4. And then the next game, uh, Kellen, in a kind of a tight game, uh, hits a grand slam. And then uh, Caden follows up later with a two, a two or three run homer. And, you know, and that was kind of unique brothers. You know, the yeah. whole thing was like, have brothers ever homered in the same game? And mm-hmm. and uh, the Oregonia did a better article, and Harold saw that. And Harold, I think Harold kind of liked the two, you know, the – the sport thing from football to baseball and, you know, an inner city school and, and brothers playing together and, and homering. And, and then on uh, the, that, the third game, uh, Kellen got his first start on the mound and he, uh, he throws a one hit shutout to his brother who was catching. So wow. I think Harold yeah. was intrigued by the story and he had, had the kids on and it was just, it was really neat. So it was fun and glad you got to see that Mike, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's been kind of a trip. Congratulations on yeah, that, and awesome. all the while while they're doing that, I mean, uh, just you know, Dan. I mean, I'm glad we get to talk to you about it, but that's got to be 
pretty thrilling for you as a papa, right? I mean, to see that, to see them having that kind of time together, how great is that, Dan? Oh, it, it's awesome. I, 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 w- I was hopeful that I'd get to see them play on a team together, and football seemed like the, the, that that was going to happen. Uh, you know, and then we had COVID, and so all of a sudden, you know, my older son got his senior year, do I get to see the boys together on the football field? And that ended up happening, and that was a lot of fun seeing those guys play football together. And they played on a, a really good team, uh, and uh, and then to, to to see him on the baseball field is is awesome too, you know. And and Kellen making the team, and and just uh, yeah, it's, it, it's really crazy, and yeah, it is fun. It's uh, they're good boys, and you know they've been around it, uh, but you know they're they're representing their community and their high school real well, I think. Dan, to hear you say yeah, <clears throat> about yeah. 300 people at the ball game, mm. that speaks to the hunger, the desire to get out and see games yeah. again. And it leads me yeah. to thinking about what, you know, we've had about 525 people on a consistent basis for Beaver home games at Goss yep. Stadium at Coleman Field. What is What are your thoughts now, your your hope, your sure. plan for what you think the summer of 2020, 2021 with night baseball is going to look like? Well, I think, you know, in the now we're kind of, we're looking at, what you just described, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know that 500-ish number. But you know what? We've got time. We don't open until June 18th. And I think you guys, you saw the CDC report yesterday, right? It's like, I just can't, it's, it's you know, people are going to get vaccinated, right? And, uh, you know, the, 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 the news is encouraging that when you're outdoors, it's just, you know, it's pretty safe. Mm-hmm. So I think we have a, a safe place for people to congregate. And, you know, I think there's a chance come into June, early July, you know, things just open up and we, we can have some big crowds. Uh, in the meantime, we're in a kind of a stuck in a, in a, in this kind of pause mode in terms of what we can, you know, uh, what, you know, right now I could, uh, all I can tell you is we're kind of in the same situation based on risk levels and, and, uh, COVID measures that, you know, we can only have so many people in the park, right, mm-hmm. Mike? Uh, mm-hmm. you, know, well, l- l- you know, 500 plus-ish. But I think it's going to I think it's gonna be a lot better come late June. And things are, things are going to open up. It's just going to happen. And a much, much better situation than, than a year ago. I mean, a year ago it was yeah. what are we going to do, and then, it, and then the disappointing news. And the yep. fact that the league and you guys were able to – Basically, sustain that, stay alive, and then come back yep. this year. I mean, that is great. Yeah, it's awesome. It says a lot uh, about the league and the stability of ownership, and and the owners committed to this, and the wherewithal that we didn't lose a single franchise. In fact, we, you know, have been adding franchises. Uh, you know, you know, it's too bad our new members in Edmonton and Kamloops and Nanaimo couldn't have their expansion year uh in 2021 but hey they'll do it they'll do it in 2022 and then you know we all of a sudden have a uh, a close rival in springfield that will come on board in 2022 so i think the strength of the league is definitely uh clear at this point you know considering we've shoot we made it through last year and we're going to make it through this year and in 2022 i think it's going to be really good Dan Siegel, our guest on the Joe Beaver Show. Dan, tell us about Springfield and how that came to be. Is it something, is that a, a territory that the league's been looking at for a while? I don't think so. I don't think it's a territory that the league's been looking at. I think it's just an organic thing. There's uh, The ownership group is really connected in the community in Springfield in doing a lot of community-minded uh, things, including you know building a facility that will cater uh, to youth sports, an underprivileged uh, uh, segment of the community. They, they've got some real neat things going, uh, all kinds of different partnerships with the school district, with Huddle, uh, you know, uh, Huddle Up, which, you know, serves that community, and just uh, super community-minded guys, uh, Ike Olson of Olson Electric and Kelly Richardson of Richardson Sports. Uh, those in the sporting business are are pretty familiar with Richardson. They their leading cap uh, company, great hats. Uh, but yeah, two two really good guys. Uh, they're U of O grads. Uh, you know, they support University of Oregon athletics. Uh, they really support the community, and they want to do this thing. They want to they want to 
you know, offer an opportunity for summer uh, college baseball players to develop and be part of the community. And they've also partnered, Mike, with Bushnell University, Mm -hmm. uh, who brought back baseball. uh, And Bushnell will play at the facility uh, with the new Springfield Drifters, and there'll be a lot of neat events in Springfield. Yeah, I like the sound of it. And the the state then, the Beaver State that we're in, the yep. state of Oregon, is pretty well represented now, right? I mean, you and some good rivalries can build within the state, within the West Coast yep. League. Oh, I know. You've got the Elks and the Knights that's long, a long-time rivalry. And by the way, Mike, the Elks uh, are going to have quite an OSU Knights representation. Kyle Milbach mm-hmm. is managing that team. Joey Wong is going to be an assistant coach. Tyler Graham is going to be assistant coach. The Elks are going to be tough, and that rivalry's been, uh, you know, three decades yeah. of baseball. And then you've got the Pickles. We love playing the Pickles up in Portland. That's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And now we have the Drifters, and and I think Bree Miller and the new GM with Springfield, Jamie Christopher, is going to have fun coming up with some sort of rivalry mm-hmm. uh, name or or series. Or I mean, there's a lot of opportunities there, and uh, those guys are super excited. We're excited, but. I mean, man, to have the Eugene Springfield Corvallis yeah. thing going on is going to be sweet in the summer. Very much so. Dan, we're going to close with just, a, sure. uh, I guess, a message to, to all of the fans who, you know, who stayed with you. We, we, you know, as you said, it's a testament to the league that you're yep. all here adding franchises and not losing them after the year that, uh, that we've all been through, that everyone in your league went through. What about the Knights fans in terms of what you hear from them? You've become such a fixture in the summer. What's your message now to fans about, hey, is it be patient where things are going to open up, kind of how we opened that, hey, we've got a summer of baseball coming? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know, obviously we're grateful, uh, you know, because we we haven't lost a lot of season ticket holders. I'd say we'd even gained some that are anxious to see baseball, and we're we're ready, and we can service those season ticket holders. And, again, season ticket holders, thank you. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us. We will have baseball. And then for, you know, families and businesses in the area, you know, things, I, I am optimistic. I think they'll open up and, uh, you know, come gather and have fun uh, at the ballpark, watch some baseball, have a hot dog, have a beer. Uh, the fun is coming. It is. Yeah. It's going to yeah. – it's, it's returning and, and – and summer nights will be back, and yeah. So, but I mean, mainly, Mike, just grateful that our partners are have hung in there with us, and our season ticket holders. It's amazing. I mean, our season ticket holder base is really good, and we appreciate that. And we're 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 very uh, very grateful, and looking forward to you know being able to invite more and more people to the park this summer. Dan, great to talk to you. Thanks for the update. Congratulations Thanks, on, on getting your boys into Harold's house. That was so fun Harold's to see. And Harold's it's awesome. A, it really was. Thanks for the time, Dan. We'll talk soon. We appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, John. You guys take care. Have a great day. Thank you. Dan Siegel, our guest.